Hi everybody, welcome to the next lecture on multimediale Werkzeuge. Today with a continuation on the discrete cosine transform subbands. So let's take a look again um, at the one-dimensional DCT. So we have a transform of 8 by 8 blocks, um, so small images. So let's call it transform. So, and here we have eight by eight pixel images, right? And um, we denote them with x of n comma m, where n comma m are indices, two dimensional indices of the location in the spatial domain. So location here is the space domain. And after the transform, we obtain spatial frequency components, right? So instead of having um, the location indices. Now we have subband indices K and L. So these indices now denote frequencies, the subbands. So in the one dimensional, you can simply write it as this uh, matrix multiplication. So T is the DCT transform matrix, 8 by 8 of the size in this example. And then here we have our um, eight pixels, for instance, um, a column or a row, and here the index is space or the location of those pixels, and out comes frequencies with the index of the subband or the frequency. Each subband has a different frequency, a different center frequency. So that means after the DCT, there are no more space or location indices within the resulting 8x8 DCT block. The spatial frequency components that we obtain apply to the entire DCT block. So if you have an output at a certain frequency subband, that means this frequency, this, uh, and this detail appears somewhere in this block, but we don't know where. So before the transform, the index denotes space or the location of our pixel. And after the trans uh, transform, the index denotes the frequency subband. Yeah. So maybe I can add that here. So the frequency subband. So here's an example. So before we have a part of an image, so we have four blocks of eight by eight pixels. And then we apply the two dimensional DCT to each of those blocks. And the result for each of those blocks is then the subband coefficients that come out of the DCT. So here you can see the indices that come out here vertically and horizontally denote the horizontal and vertically verti vertical subband frequencies. So starting with zero and going up to seven. Or here in this example, it starts from one and goes up to eight. But um, usually in the formulas, we start with a zero. So don't be, be confused with uh, indices here. And zero, zero usually is um, the DC component and that has usually the highest value. And um, the values here are um, indicated by the brightness. So the more brighter um, the spot is, um, the higher the value is. So here you can see we have bright DC um, um, rectangles here, and that means uh, the DC value is high. And then we have very low, um, very small values for the higher spatial frequencies, as you can see when we go down. And this is true for each of the blocks. So you can see here the blocks themselves are still there, but the meaning of the content of the blocks changes. So now we can see that, for instance, this DC value or the higher frequencies here apply to this block. So in that sense, we didn't really lose the location or the space information completely. It's just that it's now the block index that is now the new location. Uh, information. So we still have the block and uh, we know where the block is, is and then we know within this block we have these and these frequencies. So that means as a result we have a 
space frequency representation. So space for the location of the blocks and frequency for the frequency decomposition that we get within the blocks. Right. Yeah, so the mentioned DC value is frequency 0, 0. And when we look at the formula for the discrete cosine transform, we have a cosine of k times something, where k is the frequency index. And if this k is 0, then we have a cosine of 0, and that means the cosine is 1. And um, when we look at the sum of the DCT of the transform, it sums over the pixels of the block. And that means uh, effectively the DC component um, is the average value over the 8 by 8 block. So it's the average brightness of the block. And this is also um, the reason why it's always um, the largest. The higher spatial frequencies correspond to the brightness changes within the 8 by 8 block. For instance, horizontal edges, vertical edges, diagonal edges, with different degrees of intensity. So for the higher frequencies, we need to have changes within the block. If we don't have any changes, then those coefficients will be zero. They will disappear. If we have only small changes, then they will be smaller. So what do we do with color? Well, for color, usually first we um, apply the color transform, which computes Y, C, B, C, R, or Y, U, V, and then we apply the DCT on the 8x8 blocks on each of those components. Right, so first we compute Y and the two color components and then apply the DCT decomposition to each. Yeah, and for most images those 8x8 blocks are usually very small parts of the image and usually contain more or less flat areas because of uh, this reason which means little change in brightness. And hence, the DC coefficient is usually by far the largest. So this means instead of having eight by eight or 64 large spatial coefficients, the original pixels, right? So here, these would be the original pixels. Pixels. Only one coefficient is large after the DCT. Right. So that means we can save many bits um, by going to the DCT uh, domain. Yeah, so that means only the DC coefficients need more bits. The small values of the remaining coefficients can be encoded with a few bits. And this is important uh, for the compression, the coding gain. Yeah, important here, the concentration of the energy of the 8x8 blocks in a few coefficients around DC. So here, usually it's around DC. This is also called energy compaction, right? Because uh, the energy is compacted into this one corner in the upper left-hand part of our DCT block. Yeah, also observe the spatial frequencies still contain a spatial dependency, as I mentioned, as location of the 8x8 blocks. Spatial resolution is no, no longer pixel-wise, but block-wise. So we have less precise location information, but we have frequency information for that. So that means we can now reorder all coefficients of the same spatial frequency to new images smaller by a factor of 8 in each dimension, because that was our block size. And this re represents then the resulting subbands, right? as we already saw last time in, the ex in this example. So this is how it works. So we start with the blocks containing the DCT coefficients. Here you can see the indices after the DCT. So these are the frequency coefficients, the frequency indices. And then we reorder them. We take all the um, coefficients of index 0, 0, and put them into a separate image, right? So we collect all um, frequency coefficients with the same indices into separate images. So we start again with this test image, 
black and white of this um, Ilmenau image. So this is original. And then we apply um, the DCT, the two-dimensional DCT, to each 8 by 8 pixel block. And this was the result that we already saw last time. And we saw that um, the trees all of a sudden appear bright because they have fine details. And that means that more of those 8 by 8 DCT blocks have high values, the higher frequencies. And that means those blocks appear brighter. Whereas um, the, the even surfaces like the snow and the sky, they mainly have only the DC coefficient bright. And that means those blocks appear darker. Right. So now we can do the reordering. Put all the DC um, coefficients, for instance, into this separate image. So this is then the resulting image of all the DC coefficients together. So here is um, frequency indices 0, 0, 0,0 uh, together. So next one here we have frequency coefficients 0, 0,1. Here we have 1,0 and so on. And when you look closely here you can see the horizontal edges and here you can see the vertical edges. And when you go further right you see the, strong, uh, the stronger horizontal edges. And down here the stronger horizontal edges and then here you can see diagonal edges as we already saw last time in the demo. Yeah. So 0, 0, subband 0, 0 looks like the original image. So there should be a comma, the DC components. So it looks like the small original image with correspondingly less details. And then details in the other subbands, um, they are 1,0 and 0, 0,1, and they show um, the edges. So, <coughs> yeah, here 1,0 shows the vertical edges, 0, 0,1 shows the horizontal edges, and 1,1 the diagonal edges. And higher subbands, which means with higher indices, show correspondingly more pronounced edges, which means faster transitions between light and, or bright and dark. So I should call this bright maybe. Bright and dark. Yeah, so this is um, now just for um, the teams that work on the robot uh, control for the two-legged robot. So I skip over it in this uh, video, but it's still in the slides. Okay, so that should be it for this part of the slides and then see you in the next part.